what does it mean, this this idea of crucifixion? You know, to me, this isn't a religious thing. I'm not a Christian, but I'm so moved by this idea of what does it mean to, to have a crucifixion in your own life that then takes you to rebirth? What does that mean? Like this whole idea of Jesus on the cross... You know, I people they're just like, wow, you know, it's just this like patriarchal bullshit, blah blah blah. I'm like, no, no. If you're actually dealing with surrender, and I and I really, you'll you'll get the video on Easter because we'll we'll post it um, on the general Facebook page. But if you're dealing with the personal issue of surrender in your life, and actually really applying the ideas that we're talking about here. This isn't a path of, oh, being a goddess is how many things can I manifest? Oh, I must be a goddess because I know how to manifest a half a million dollars. That's not being a god or goddess. That's just a power. You know, the, the Sanskrit scriptures talk about that. They they say that there's something called a city. It's S-I-D-D-H-I. And a city is simply the power to manifest. Now, they're not evil. You know, if you want to go manifest half a million dollars, go for it. But that has nothing to do with knowing the divine self. And in fact, the Sanskrit scriptures talked about that, and they said you can spend a life focused on get this, get that, oh, I'm really powerful, I know how to make a lot of money, oh, I'm really powerful, I can get everybody to fall in love with me, oh, I'm really powerful, you know, all of that. Those are cities. And they would say, don't mistake that for giving yourself to the divine. Now, there's nothing wrong with, I I mean, I believe in the goddess Lakshmi, so the goddess of beauty and wealth, and there's nothing wrong with money, there's nothing wrong with any of these things. It's the attachment. That often comes through cities, which is why surrender is so powerful. So, you know, I'm, I'm partly bringing this up because we, we made the, this video about crucifixion. What does it mean on a personal level? Because to me, what it means is that the deepest desire, whatever it is, let's say you say, oh, there's this person, there's this amazing person, and I... I feel like I can't live without that person. Or there's a job, and I feel like if I don't get that job, I will die. Or I feel like if I don't get the house I've been waiting for, I will die. Whatever, Or if I don't get well from my illness. Whatever the thing is that says, I must have this. If I don't have this, I will be furious at, at the universe. I will be bitter. I will be whatever. That thing is actually the thing that if offered to the divine takes you into God's arms. To me, that's the meaning of the crucifixion. And because it's literally the thing that you think you will die without. And then, oh my God, it's the most beautiful thing. Because what you finally realize, and I think some of you are already having this experience, is that when it's truly offered, and sometimes, oh my God, it is so painful. I'm not talking about this stuff like it's some intellectual abstraction. Some of these things, the things that you the, the, you want most deeply, you know, whether it's any of the stuff, whatever it is, whatever your personal thing is, when you're offering it to the divine and you're feeling, you know, make me, change me into somebody who feels whole with or without this thing, that's when you become a goddess. That's when you become a god. It's not by going, I know how to manifest this piece of garbage or that piece. That has nothing to do with being a goddess. That's a power that anybody can learn. There have been some very bad people on the planet (laughs) that have had enormous powers. 
to manifest things. So that's a, that's a lower chakra power. But what I'm talking about is something very different. It's where you offer even the deepest desires to the divine self inside you, not some guy in the sky, not some patriarchal image, but to that force of love inside you. You take that deepest one thing. I'll bet every single person on this call has their one thing that says, oh, my God, if this one thing doesn't happen, I'll be devastated. If I don't have that baby, if I don't, whatever it is. If you take that one thing and you truly offer it to the divine and say, it's it's sort of like the inconceivable yes. It's like where you're really saying, even this, I want to be whole. I want to be whole. It's like that's where you become the divine. You're whole. Your wholeness is not contingent upon whether so-and-so loves you or whether, you know, you end up on Oprah or, you know, whatever. I don't judge any of these things. It's just like whatever the thing is, you become divine. You know your own divinity once you actually say to that God or goddess inside, I want my own wholeness more than that, then whatever is meant to happen with that thing can come. That's the irony. And it can come as a gift from the divine. It doesn't come as, aren't I great? I know how to manifest shit. It's not that. That's the small self. And the way you can tell it is because when I'm, I'm so glad that these issues about manifesting keep coming up on the page because, you know, I, I am willing to talk about this topic forever because it's really what prompted me to write Outrageous Openness because I was giving readings in those days and so many people were calling me with such suffering about manifesting not evil there's nothing you're not you know it's nothing per se wrong with it they were just suffering because they were either like i'm trying to make this happen and it's not happening what am i doing wrong or i got this thing i went and i paid five thousand dollars and i took this workshop and it showed me how to make all my wishes come true and then I met the man of my dreams. I'll I'll tell you one woman's story. She said, I met the man of my dreams out of this. She took some workshop. It was literally $5,000. It was called Make Your Wishes Come True. I think I wrote an article about her once uh, because I kind of love this. She paid this very amazingly high fee, took this workshop. The woman promised all your wishes will come true if you take this workshop. So she really wanted this guy. Took the workshop focused on it, focused on it, focused on it, got the guy. Then, about six months later, the guy died. Now, I don't think he died (laughs) because of anything she did. I think his karma was to leave the planet at that point. Now, because she had no, there was no offering, there was no surrender, there was no anything. There was just, I want this person. I'm going to do all these things that I'm going to learn in this very expensive course to get this person. Then she was ecstatic. She got him. And then six months later, it was over. Now, the soul had no experience of divinity from doing all that. I mean, yes, she got him. And I guess there's that excitement when you get somebody you want. But it's very different when it's truly offered to the divine and you really say, I'll, I'll use the example of, of a, a person because I think it's one where many people suffer. And, you know, it's so different when you say to the divine, this is actually how you have a holy union with somebody, right? When you actually say, this now belongs to you. If this is the person you want me to be with, then bring them. If this isn't the person you want me to be with, free me. 
from the attachment because, you know, my God, we all go through this. We have these karmic attachments to people that happen because we've had past lives with them and they're so familiar. That doesn't necessarily mean that we're meant to be with them in this life. Sometimes we are, sometimes we're not. But the the familiarity can bring enormous, enormous attachments. So if you actually say, all right, if this is the person I'm meant to be with, I am 100% giving this to you, God, 100%. If it's right, let it unfold at the right time. If it's not right, free me from the, it's really like a karmic cage. Free me from the cage that's making me fixate on that and bring the perfect solution. Do you see what I mean? Because then once anything, whether it's relationship, it's desire for a child, all these different things, once it's truly offered to the divine, not, oh, I'm a goddess, I know how to create this. No. Once it's offered to the divine and you receive it, it comes through you. It's actually like these you end up birthing all these miracles. But you didn't create the miracles any more than you created a baby that's born through you. That's the essence of existence using your body to create the baby. So, it's you know, I always think of that thing with the woman and the guy who died because I think, oh, my God, when he died... I was dealing with her as a client. She went out of her mind for, I would say, two years. And I'm not saying you're not devastated when you lose somebody like that. But it was because she really believed she had created it. And it was 100% attachment. So I'm hoping this makes sense. There are things that happen in the programs, and again, if anybody's in these kind of programs, that's 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 fi- that's fine. That's where your soul is. But if you write about it, I, I'm, I'm going to ask you, if you write about it on the Facebook page, please don't advertise it as something that I'm condoning because I'm really saying I'm there's a doing a different route here that's absolutely about you become a divine being by giving your essence to the great self. And that involves surrender. You're not surrendering to me, God. Oh, my God forbid. Oh, my Lord. I'm surrendering to the goddess myself. And I have to say, that's a process that sometimes is so painful. And you cannot be scared of the pain. Or you can be scared of the pain, and you can say, I don't want this pain, and I'll just, that's okay, and I'll go focus on something else, and that's fine too. But I would say it's a, there's a very unique thing going on here that is about how you wake up to knowing that you are divine. And it's not from giving God a shopping list. It's from inviting that force to take over. And what that means sometimes is that the things the small self wants, you don't get right away. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. But it's about a kind of bowing to the inner self. Now, the one thing I will say is like some of those programs that are out there, and I don't want to really focus on one or the other because I don't want to be speaking badly about anything. I'm just telling you what something energetically is and it is not. And the good thing of some of these programs that are out there that are about, you know, we're all beautiful, we're all goddesses, you know, I'm sexy, I'm seductive, everybody wants me, isn't that great, I know my own value, I know my own worth – There's a very positive part of that, I think, if you grew up thinking that you're not. Then I think it's wonderful to to start to go, I believe I'm beautiful. I believe I'm desirable. 
I believe I'm appealing, you know, I'm all those things. That's wonderful. I'm all for that. The problem is that that is only half the story. In a way, it kind of goes back to what Ajashanti, who I, you know, I end up quoting one way or another. I can never get away from an Ajashanti quote. When he has that quote where he says, don't mistake trading a mundane ego for a spiritual ego, that hits the nail on the head because a focus on I'm the goddess because I know how to, you know, get whatever I need anywhere and anytime and I know how to send energy out from my lower chakras and make people think I'm hot and I know how to, you know, surround myself with beauty and I know how to dress beautifully. That's all one aspect of the goddess. Beautiful. Has nothing to do with surrender whatsoever. Zero. Surrender is the other side where when something gets taken from you, when you lose something, you can actually turn to that divine force inside and say, open me to this experience. Let me accept this loss. 